Hello everybody, my name is Peter Barnes. I'm a wedding photographer based in Nebraska. And in this video, I wanna show you how I set up my Fujifilm X-T4 for wedding photography. Fujifilm cameras are so customizable and there's really no wrong way to set them up, but I wanna show you what I do as a full-time wedding photographer. Let's start with the top dials. So I actually don't use the top dials for exposure. I have my shutter speed set to T and my ISO is set to C. This allows me to use my rear and front command dials to control my shutter speed and ISO respectively. I find this is way faster and way more effective for wedding photography. Next, we're gonna talk about my custom buttons. Now, what's amazing about the X-T4 and a lot of Fujifilm's cameras is that you can set just about every button to do whatever you want. So you can really do whatever is your preference here, but I'm gonna show you what I do. So at the top, my front function button, which is right in front of exposure compensation, I have set to select the custom settings. This lets me flip between my black and white and color modes very quickly, which we'll talk about a bit later. Next, the front function button is used to engage the wireless communication. This will allow me to use my phone to download pictures or control the camera. The top directional pad I have set to playback. This allows me to engage playback with my right hand instead of having to take my left hand off of the lens to get to playback. Function four, I have set to toggle on uh, face detection. Right now I have my face detection set to eye priority and I don't always want that. So I want to be able to flip that on and off very fast. Next is white balance. I have white balance mapped to my right on the directional D-pad. Most of the time my white balance is automatic, but if I need to use it manually, I wanna be able to get to it very fast. Then we have function six, which is the bottom directional pad. I have this set to preview exposure and white balance in manual mode. Now this is great because most of the time I want my live exposure preview on my viewfinder and LCD screen, but when I'm using flash, I want to turn that off because your ambient exposure is usually very dark. So having that feature very easily accessible is really important to me. I have all of the touch functions disabled because I do not like these going off accidentally. When these are enabled, I almost always trigger them with my nose when I use my viewfinder, so I do not like having these active. My auto exposure lock, I have set to IS or image stabilization mode. This is because I really don't like to use stabilization if I don't have to, so I always wanna be able to turn that on and off very fast. Um, AF on is set to AF on and the rear command dial when pressed is set to do a focus check so I can just press it and it will zoom in. And the Q button is set to the quick menu. Next, we're gonna cover what's actually on my display. I like to keep things very, very minimal. When you first get a Fujifilm camera, there is so much information on the back screen and I like to have as little information on my screens as possible. So all I have here are my shots remaining, my image quality, image stabilization, my focus frame, my eye detection, my shutter speed, aperture and ISO, and my battery level. I find that is all that I need because I use the live exposure preview most of the time, but you can change pretty much all of these settings. I like to have pretty much everything turned off, so that way all I have to focus on is my actual image. Now we're gonna cover menu settings. There are a lot of settings in this camera and I'm going to skip most of them. I just wanna cover the ones that I feel are most important. First is image size. I have this set to large so I can get the maximum resolution. Image quality, I actually have set to raw plus JPEG, normal. And I do this because on Fujifilm cameras, when you have a JPEG next to your raw files, when you go to playback your images, you can actually zoom in a lot further with your JPEG than if you just had raw files. And I find that extra magnification is really useful. This also allows me to use my Instax Share SP2 printer to make same day Polaroids for all the weddings that I shoot. I could do that same thing with the in-camera raw conversion, but I find it's a lot quicker to already have the JPEGs and it really doesn't take up that much extra space. What does take up extra space is your raw recording. 
I have it set to lossless compressed. I just find that there is no difference between lossless and uncompressed, and having lossless compressed gives you so many extra pictures. On a 128 gig SanDisk Extreme Pro card, I get 3,000 pictures even, and I find that that is more than enough for what I am doing. After this, we start getting into the custom settings. So like I said earlier, I use my front function command button to access my custom settings. This is all of my color ones. So right now I have my film set to Pro Neg High, which is my preference, but you can really use any of the color ones. Then for grain, I have that turned off, color chrome off, FX off, white balance is automatic, dynamic range is 100. The tone curve, I have set with the shadows with a plus two adjustment. That just pushes the contrast a little bit. This is so that way if I show a client a picture off the back of the camera, it's gonna already look pretty good. This does not affect your raw files at all. Color, I have at zero, sharpness plus two. High ISO is set to negative four. I just find that Fuji's high ISO noise reduction is very, very aggressive and it's actually noticeable on the back of the camera. Even though it doesn't affect RAW files, I like to have this at negative four, which is the lowest settings. Clarity at zero, long exposure, noise reduction is turned off, lens modulation is on, color space, leave that alone. So now if we go to the black and white setting, I have it set to Acros. I don't use any of the filters, just the standard Acros. Uh, monochromatic color, I haven't messed with. Grain effect off, all this is off. The only difference is my tone curve is a little more aggressive with the black and white settings because I find that because there's no color, it's more accepting to higher contrast, which looks really nice on the back of the camera. Sharpness is plus two, high ISO, minus four, same deal, same deal, same deal. I'm gonna go ahead and just go back to color. And these are really the only two that I use. And this is nice because if you are in a very poorly lit situation at a wedding, I find that shooting in black and white just really saves that in case you wanna show your couple something, they'll see a really nice, beautiful black and white image. And you can always tell them that you have the color copy, you're just displaying it in black and white. It just helps when you're doing that. Now we're gonna move on to the autofocus settings. So focus area just lets you pick your autofocus point. It's the same thing as using your joystick. The autofocus mode I have set to all. This allows me to use the rear command dial when I engage autofocus right like this and just cycle through every different kind of tracking. So you go to zone and then wide tracking back to single point. And I find that's useful because now I don't have to think about what autofocus mode to be in. I just have to make the point bigger and it's going to naturally work. For AFC custom settings, I find that scene three tends to work the best, but honestly, that will depend on your lens a lot and just experiment and see what works best for you. I have my AF mode storage set to just the point. I don't want the actual autofocus mode to change, but sometimes if I'm flipping between vertical and horizontal, I do want there to be different autofocus points. For display, don't worry about it. This just shows you um, an outline of your focus points, so I don't need that. I actually like to have my focus points, I leave it at the default 117, because I find that at a wedding, there are a lot of times where I need to go to various different parts of the frame, and I just find that having the smaller number of points makes that far easier. If I had the full 425, it just takes longer to get to another part of the frame, and I don't like that. So I have it set to 117. Pre-AF, I have turned off. That will save a lot of battery power because pre-AF is just the camera constantly trying to autofocus. So that way, when you actually go to half press the shutter, you are closer to your subject. But I think it makes the camera feel really weird and it does take up a lot of battery. The illuminator is turned off because I think it's annoying. Um, face and eye, again, that's already covered with my custom button, so we're not gonna worry about it. MF Assist, I have set to peak because when I'm using my Miticon 35, I need to have focus peaking. 
Focus check is turned off. So what that is, is when you're in manual focus, if you have focus check turned on, every time you turn the focus ring on your lens, the camera will automatically magnify in. I don't like that because I like to have my composition more readily available. I don't want it jumping in and out all the time. Uh, release and focus, I set both of them to release because I find that the camera will sometimes miss focus, but it rarely ever takes too long to focus. And for wedding photography, I would much rather capture a moment, but have it be a bit blurry versus not getting it at all. Uh, then touchscreen I have turned off because again, I do not like the touchscreen going off on its own. Now we're gonna cover the shooting settings. I don't use most of these. Uh, my drive setting is set to 15 FPS for the continuous high, but I don't use that too often. Sports Finder, most of the stuff I don't use for weddings. Uh, photometry, I have set to average, but if you're getting some weird exposure readings, you might try one of the other ones. For shutter, I almost always have this on mechanical. I just find it's the most uh, forgiving as far as lighting goes. Electronic shutter is nice if you need complete silence, but I rarely do, so I have it on mechanical. Flicker reduction, I only turn that on if I'm noticing I'm getting some problems with flickering. And image stabilization mode, that's already covered with my custom button. I don't use auto ISO, but if you do, you will want to make sure that you set your range, so that way your ISO doesn't go crazy when you're shooting. Multi-exposure doesn't matter, and wireless communication, again, I have a function button for that, so that's all there is there. With the flash settings, there's really only one thing I ever change here, and it's in the flash function setting. What I will do is go to the sync and sometimes go to second curtain sync. And that is really only if I am doing light dragging at a reception. What this will do, second curtain sync will make your flash fire after the exposure has already happened. So normally in first curtain sync, when you press your shutter button, the flash fires. But with rear curtain sync, your shutter actuates first and then your flash fires at the end. That can look really nice for light dragging because it means that your subject will actually be on top of the trails instead of behind them. If you want a video on flash trails, let me know and I can make one. All right, now we're into the setup menu, which is where a lot of fun stuff happens. Um, user setting, I don't really use a whole lot, but if you want to take advantage of the my menu, you can. I don't really do that, but it's there if you want it. Um, sound setup, I have my AF beep turned off because I think that is super annoying when the camera is constantly beeping. And the shutter volume, I also have turned off. This controls the volume of your electronic shutter. I have that off because if I'm using E shutter, it's because I want silence. For the screen, this is where you can adjust a lot of things. I have my EVF and LCD a bit brighter than normal and I have made these color adjustments just to try to color match them to each other as best as I can. Image display, I have this turned off, but with this on, every time I take a picture, it will show you that picture after you take it. I don't like that, so I have it turned off. Auto rotate is turned off. Um, again, this preview exposure, that's taken care of with a custom button. Natural live view, I have turned off because that looks weird. It turns off all of your um, film settings and I just don't like how it makes it look. Then we go to display custom settings. This is where you're able to enable and disable everything that comes up on your actual display. So you notice I have a lot of these things turned off. I just have a few. So again, the framing outline, focus frame, manual focus indicator, that's nice when I'm using manual focus. Um, aperture, exposure settings, uh, photometry. This just shows me whether or not my eye detection is on or off. Shutter type. Uh, continuous mode, so if I go to continuous high, I wanna see that on the screen so I can know if I'm about to run off a bunch of pics. Uh, IS mode, again, whether or not it's gonna show me the IS mode and frames remaining. Uh, all of this stuff is for um, video shooting and then battery level, so that's all I have there. Then for button and dials, again, this is a lot of the same things that we covered earlier. For the quick menu, I have my photo menu pretty light because I don't use most of these. Selector button, you want to have this on FN button, not focus area. If you set it to focus area, your directional pad will no longer perform functions. They will just change your focus point, which is pointless because you have a joystick to do that already. Command dials, 
This is if you want to change which dial does shutter speed and um, ISO, but I like having it in its default setting. Shutter AF, I leave on. This, you can turn this off if you want to do back button focus. Shoot without lens, I have to have turned on because my Miticon 35 doesn't have any contacts. So when I put that on the camera, the camera thinks there is no lens. Shoot without card is obviously turned off. And touchscreen, again, everything else is turned off. Power management, I have the auto power off turned off because I hate it when I would go for my camera and it's turned off and I have to flip the on and off switch. Performance is on boost because I find that the battery life is really good even in boost mode and you get a nice boost to your um, frame rate and autofocus. So save data is just all of the uh, file name stuff. So frame number I have on continuous so that way even after I format, um, it will show me the continuous counting of all my frames. And then card slot settings I have set to backup. So that way, even though I'm shooting RAW plus JPEG, I want all of those to go to both cards. Again, it is so important when you're shooting weddings that you are backing up all of your images. This is not negotiable. You have to do that. You cannot do a wedding again. Do not take the risk. Don't let your card break on you. And then you just have your connection settings. You just have your uh, Instax here, which I have connected to my Instax printer. As well, you can use this to set up your phone. But that is really it for the connection settings. And in fact, that's it for all the menu settings too. There is a lot in there. And again, I just covered what I felt was the most important for wedding photography. So that is how I set up my Fujifilm X-T4 for wedding photography. If you guys have any questions or any suggestions, please let me know in the comments. I would love to hear from you. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Have a good one.